All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I'm your host, Larry. We're back to check out a fresh and fancy Google Doodle here today. Uh, actually, I think 10 bajillion years ago, when I first started doing stuff on YouTube, I actually played a Google Doodle and speed ran it as just something to make a recording about. And lo and behold, Google has released today a cute little game about helping a rabbit get a hold of all of the delicious apples and carrots and stuff that they like to eat. And it also doubles as an educational tool in order to teach kids how to program, or at least some of the starting logic in how to get computers to do stuff. So let's have a look here. So if we click play, and I turn my volume down because this is very, very loud, even at the lowest setting. We'll see how this, how this plays. So basically, here we are, we've got this rabbit, and it says, let's get to the party. Collect carrots on the way using code blocks. So essentially what we do is we got this little section here where we tell the rabbit what direction or motions or controls to do in order to eat all the carrots on our way to some sort of delicious festive party. And when we arrange the blocks together, they just help the rabbit find their way. So in this case, we need to collect two carrots on our little pathway on these little blocks here. So I'm gonna take these little directional arrows and align them in a row and then click play so that we can eat them. And then as we eat them, like plants grow and the forest is like, yay, the circle of life. And everyone is extremely happy. So now to sort of illustrate what's going on with how code works, we're going to start mixing and matching directional controls to help the rabbit get to where they need to go. So currently, if the rabbit tries to go forward, they will fall off the edge of the abyss and fall into the void, probably to their deaths. So to get around that, we're going to tell the rabbit to hang a quick right, quick right and then go straight to eat that delicious carrot. So this introduces motion controls to kids so that they can eat stuff and go about their merry, happy holiday day. It's a good time. And then I think after that, we actually start getting into some semi-advanced programming tips where instead of like saying, okay, take a, take a right and then keep going, we can just hook these things into a repeat object to learn that you can just make certain things in programming go on loops so as to save coding space and also a little bit of sanity in the professional world. I think that's a pretty good way of talking about it. So basically what we have to do here in this scene with this lovely little windmill is we have to hop, hop, turn, hop, hop, turn, hop, hop, turn. So four consecutive actions that all require you to do the same thing. So we're gonna take the loop function, and we're gonna say, let's just hop, hop, and then turn. We'll press go, and then our little rabbit will hop, hop, turn. I actually think it's really kind of cute how they do the changing graphics and the very minimalist art style as you go through and do stuff. And apparently I, you can win the prizes for having the shortest solution to stuff which is kind of cool. So this is a situation where we have to repeat an uh, action four times and then reverse that action and repeat another action four times. So if we take a look at this, we need to put together a repeat. We need to hop, hop, turn like we were just doing. And then let's see what happens. So we hop, hop, turn, hop, hop, turn, hop, hop, turn. But if we turn right again, it takes us down the wrong pathway, so we need to turn back to the left and then keep going forward. So to fix that, we'll take this object here, which I feel like the turning objects are a little bit too similar. I feel like they could be a little bit more different to try to illustrate that these are different objects a little bit more. And then once we do that, we'll do the exact same thing, but with turning to the left instead. So let's see about doing that. So that'll repeat the first set of actions four times, but instead of turning back this way, it'll turn straight and then do the exact same thing just in the opposite direction. And there we have it. Victory, sweet 
and savory carroty victory. So this one's a little odd because this one is going to require us to do basically the same thing that we just did, but four individual times. I feel like we can manage this, probably. So we'll hop, hop, turn, then turn back, and then do hop, whoops, that's not what I wanted. And then do hop, hop, turn, and then go all the way over here, turn back, and we'll go hop, hop, turn, somewhere over here. And then once more with feeling, we will go hop, oops, that's not where I wanted it at all, hop, hop, turn. This might be, I'm not really thinking this through th thoroughly through in my head, but that's basically the gist that we need to go about doing. So we'll, we'll do a little zoop through here, around here, up through here. It's a really kind of zigzaggy, windy way of going about it, but when you don't really need to come up with fresh logic for a game or a programming task like this, it might not be the optimally most efficient thing, but when it comes to making a programming startup in this day and age, it just has to work even if it's just held together with duct tape and uh, black magic. And so this is essentially the Google Doodle. You can learn how to make different solutions, you can test them, try them again, work with other people, and then up here, Google actually has the ability to go between different levels, share what you've just been worked on, or to search through other people's solutions to see how other people accomplished the same task. And I think it's kind of cool. So we can actually look like what other people's solutions were, which I think the shortest solution tends to be the one that I was already using. But that's basically the gist of it. And I think this is cool. I mean, this basically says that with the right sorts of games and puzzles and tools, you can teach kids from a very early age how to program, because the reality is software, technology, computers, robotics, AI, that stuff is all here to stay, so you might as well help your kids get a leg up in the competition against everyone else in the world as soon as possible. And I think games like this are really going to be something that paves the way for kids in the future. So. For people out there looking for ways to break into the educational gaming market, this is definitely something that you should take a look at. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I thought this was just something cool to share and take a look at and to share with other people. I've been your host, Larry, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody.